I'm Lynn Langett and in today's All Things Data, I'm going to take a look at the new release of Microsoft Power BI for Office 365 Preview. So if you've not listened to one of my screencasts before, I am an MVP for SQL Server. I'm also a Google Cloud Platform Developer Expert, uh, MongoDB Master, uh, Cloudera Certified Developer, and I do work on the Amazon Cloud as well. I primarily work as a big data architect and technical trainer, and I'm a former Microsoft full-time employee. Now let's get started. So I've gone ahead and signed up for my account, and here I am in the Office 365 Admin Center. You're going to want to uh, download the documentation, which I've done already, and I have the documentation open here, the provisioning guide, and there's a couple steps that you're going to need to do. So the first thing is it shows you the progress of provisioning your services on the portal. So uh, it looks like everything except for SharePoint uh, seems to be provisioned. So let's see if that's updated. And while that's rendering, the first thing that you're going to need to do once you get all your services provisioned is you're going to need to assign licenses for the various services. And during the preview period, of course, the licenses are free, but um, you'll have to pay for them after preview. So uh, to do that, you can assign to specific users. The user you signed in with will already be uh, provisioned. Um, and once you do that, then you're going to assign licenses as it shows here on this page. So I'm going to go over to the portal and show you how to do that. So if I click on licenses, I can see that I have Power BI for Office 365 and I have an extended trial. And if I click on myself as a user, you can see that I need to grant myself a license. Looks like I have a conflict with this SharePoint here. In the next step in the admin section, I need to switch over to Power BI. Now you may need to log off and log on, so I'm going to close my Outlook here and sign in with my other account. I'm going to pause the video while I sign in. Okay, now that I've signed in, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Power BI. And here I am at the Admin Center. Now what Power BI is and does is it's a gateway for making uh, data sources available for your authorized users. It's a very sophisticated set of technologies that's exposed through the other Power um, services in Excel, most notably Power Query. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up a gateway. So I'm going to make a new gateway. I'm going to call it LinTest test for video and create. And uh, I need to download the gateway key and copy it to my machine. And what this is doing, it's a client that enables cloud access for on-premises data sources within my organization and exposes the data from on-premises data sources as data feeds. And I need the 64-bit version. Just to be complete, when I tried to install a gateway, I had to install the .NET Framework 4.5. So I'm going to pause and make sure that works. And now I'm going to install the gateway. I downloaded the software. And we'll do the install. So this, again, is a client that installs on the local machine, so you get a key and the gateway software. And it's complete. And now let me go back to the Power um, BI Center. Okay, so finish. And do I have my key? I'm just going to copy that. in case I need it. 
All right, so now I've got my new gateway here. And if I want to work with the gateway, I can uh, see when it was installed. I have a version of it. Um, I have the key and uh, I can uh, get the gateway package here. So this is basically the service. I've created the service. Now, in addition to this, I want to um, set up roles. So by default, I have the ability to work with this. And of course, then I could add other uh, users that I've set up through Office 365 and assign them permission um, here. So I think I'm going to go back and make a fake user so you can see how that works. So here I am back in the user section and I'm going to just add a user. Of course this can be uh, integrated with your Active Directory. I'm going to call this uh, test, test user, testing, test testing, and it will be test. And I'll say next. And uh, they're not an administrator and I want to say where they are and I'm going to have to give them some licenses. So I'll give them licenses for Power BI and say next. And there's my results for my user. So I've got a test user there. Okay. So now back in my Power BI, I can add my test user into my gateway so that I can assign different permissions for different queries. So I can check my system health uh, because you're going to be able to see in here who hit what queries when, which is pretty interesting. You got a dashboard and you have logs. Okay. Um, and then I have a get started, which takes me back to the uh, initial video. Now here I can set up data sources or I can integrate with Excel. So um, if I want to set up a new data source. Um, I can enable cloud access so people can hit it through the cloud via the OData endpoint or they can hit it through uh, SharePoint. So I can uh, specify what how I want that to work and I say next and then here's my connection information and I say test data and then I select a gateway and associate it to this gateway and then I'm going to specify a connection string. Now I haven't seen this these beta bits yet, so let's see what's in here. So we've got the provider for SQL Server or for OLEDB. Okay, so those are the two providers that we can work with. So if I said SQL Server, I'd have to have the connection string, or I could go with connection properties. And same thing here. And I could use the SQL Server native client or the OLEDB provider. And if I had this, I think I have it on localhost here. What do I have in terms of databases? I'm just going to pause and take a look here. As I'm going along setting up the data source here, I'm remembering that I need to finish registering my gateway. So I mentioned getting the key, but I didn't spec I didn't show you where to put it. So sorry for being a bit out of order here. So I'm going to paste in the key and then I'm going to register because I have to make my gateway active before I can let data sources be accessed through it. Fortunately, the dialog box stays open on the bottom until you register it. it. Takes a couple minutes for this to work, so I'll pause the video while that's going. And here it's done, and we can specify an HTTP or HTTPS endpoint, and uh, gives us uh, the port options. So we'll just use HTTP for the demo, and then I'll say close. All right, so now coming back here, um, I set up some SQL auth because I don't have Active Directory and I'll specify the credentials. Oh, maybe these bits, gateway is offline. Okay, so I need to go back to the gateway and make sure the gateway is available. So let me do that. And see if my gateway will be online. And there's my gateway. So now I can create data sources. So I got a little bit out of order there. So okay, I'm going to do this again and I'm going to call it test and select my gateway and then let's hope I can put in SQL credentials. 
because I didn't bother with the Active Directory here, which I know most of you would use, but I just was going for quick. And SQL auth. There we go. And this is running an app here. All right, I had to uh, do a couple things in SQL Server, so let me test this connection. And the connection was successful, so let me click OK. Now before I leave this data source, um, one of the things that you can do via the gateway is you can specify whether the feed will be indexed or not, and then you can specify um, how frequently it will be indexed and which tables will be exposed. So I don't want to expose this or this um, or any of the human resources tables, but all the rest of them are okay. Also, I don't want to expose any of the views. So you're setting the permissioning through this gateway. Let me take off all these views. I'll say next. And I want to specify who can access this. So I'll say both me. So who can access what, basically, and my test user. And I'll say finish. So to recap, what I've done is I've created a gateway and roles and a data source. And you can see inside of here, here's the information. And this is the interesting part. This is the, the OData feed right here. Now I found with the gateway, when I first tested with HTTP, it didn't work properly. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back to the gateway configuration manager and set it up with HTTPS and see if I can get that to work. One of the things you're going to need to do is update your Power Query. So here's the URL. If you just search on Power Query, um, you can update it. And you'll know that you have the updated version if you have this organizational setting uh, with sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my account, and then I'll pause the video and come back once I'm signed in. So now that I'm signed in, let's see if I can access that data source. So from OData feed, and let me go ahead and paste in the URL. And you'll remember this is to SQL Server data that we made available. So let's go ahead and try uh, Windows credentials first. I'm not really sure. Okay, so now let's try online services. And we should be signed in. And there's my account. Hmm, it looks like I had a trust failure. Could not establish relationship. Hmm, not really sure. Looks, I got further along. Let me try a different type of access. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out of Power Query. And so I'll bring in this movie data into Power Query. And instead of Power Query, I've got some movie data here, got a couple different sheets, and I can, um, you know, do my typical Power Query stuff in here so I can filter. I can sort. These are just kind of typical Excel things, but also because this is Power Query, I probably want to undo that sort. I can do things like use the first row as headers. Uh, then I can let's see if I have anything. I just have movies in here. This looks like this needs to be changed into date. And I can filter out nulls. So again, it just allows me to shape my data really quick like. If you haven't sp spent time playing with Power Query, it's a really, really, really um, wonderful set of capabilities. Uh, let me see if the duration is 
I can set by duration and then I can make sure that this is a numeric so I can calculate on it and so on and so forth. So now when I'm done with this what I should be able to do is I should be able to share this through the gateway. So let me call this shaped movies and uh, subset of movie data and I want to share this with my organization and include previews, okay, uh, share a copy. And if I reopen Excel and go to Power Query and I'm still signed in, should sign in as that other user, and I bring up the online search and I say movie, movies, and I uh, restrict my search to organization. This is going to give me my shaped movies. So um, the concept is that you can pull in this data and uh, then you can save the query out and you can set the the access and the um, authorization through the data services which is really quite a powerful um, set of tools. So if I click on this then you'll see as this is loading that I have all my shared public um, go back to Power Query and I can filter and shape this and work with it however I want. Now if I go and I click down and it goes back in. Now I go back to the portal, if I click shared, I think that's where I was, yeah. Those are my uh, shared uh, data sets here. And then I can go back over to the portal. Let's see, I need to, I would need to set the permissions on here. So edit settings. And I can set the permissions in here to when I publish it, I guess I'd have to put the full, there's the guy's name and then I could update and that would give permission to that one user. So um, this is a quick preview of some of the features in um, Power BI. Uh, I, I uh, am going to be working with this more and publishing more out but I've had a lot of people ask me about these features and since these bits were released today I wanted to do a quick video on it. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I'm Lynn Langett. If you want to learn more about Hadoop, SQL Server, or AWS, just click on the screens for the playlists. And if you want to follow and see the next things that I'm learning, just click on this big subscribe button and you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again.